A police car stops next to a wreckage. The sheriff's looking for gas. The place is quiet and abandoned. He sees a rotten corpse and comes near a camping place, but he suddenly hears some sounds. He sees a child pick up a teddy. When he calls for her, we see that she has a torn face and walks towards him while growling. The man that puts a bullet into her head. We then see the man eating food with his partner on duty. Shane asks Rick about his wife Lori. They're having a difficult time in their relationship. They then get a dispatch on two dangerous individuals who've shot police officers. They arrive and place spikes on the road and set up. The car's chased by police and then drives over the spikes and crashes onto the field. The men slowly approach the vehicle. One of them gets out and starts shooting. They shoot back but the man shoots Rick and is then killed. The second man also starts shooting and he's also taken down. Rick is alright, he was wearing a vest. But the third guy appears and shoots Rick right under his arm. Shane takes him out. Rick's hit hard. We then see Rick being visited by Shane in the hospital. He makes a joke about the face but there's no one there and the flowers have withered. The clock has also stopped working. Rick is in pain and slowly gets up but falls down. He calls for help but no one answers. As he leaves, there is a bed in front of the door and the hospital looks completely abandoned. The phone's not working and he sees a dead body in the hallway. As he slowly walks off, he sees bolt holes and blood everywhere. Behind two doors he hears some strange growling sounds with hands coming through and he's terrified. On the stairs there's an awful stench. He exits the hospital and finds corpses everywhere. He's in shock. The place is a ruin. He soon discovers military vehicles everywhere. As he finds a bicycle, a torn apart corpse starts crawling towards him. He's afraid and confused. He then arrives at his home and finds it to be empty. He calls out his wife and son, but they're gone and he breaks down as he doesn't know what happened to them. He doesn't know if this is a real or just a dream. As he sits at his porch, he sees someone approaching, but someone sneaks up and hits him in the head. A man that shoots the dead person asks him what kind of wound he has, but the rig fades away. When he wakes up, the man asks him what his wound is again. He says he got shot, but the man's concerned if he got bit. He didn't, but he also doesn't have a fever. The man says that he'll kill him if he tries anything and then entice him. Rick knows the house, but he can't open the curtain since the man shot a gun as noise attract the walking dead. When Rick says that he killed the man, he's told that it was a walker. When the man asks him if he even knows what's going on, he says that he woke up in the hospital. The man that tells him about the walkers who eat people. They must be quiet. If he gets bit, he'll get fever, die and then come back as a walker. At night, a car alarm goes off. They turn off the lights and look outside. They'll have to wait it out. As the boy looks out, he says that she's here and then begins crying. The woman comes near to the door and begins turning the handle. The man says that she died in this house but couldn't put her down. It is the mother of his son. The next day when Rick asks him if he's sure they're dead, he's told that they're dead except something in their brain. That's why they have to aim for the brain. Rick strikes his head a couple of times but his wound hurts him. When they come to Rick's home, he believes his family is still alive as the family pictures and clothes are gone. The man says that many people fled to Atlanta and the Center for Disease Control is also located there. He says that they also tried to get to Atlanta but panic was so crazy at the time. They go to the police station and get some guns. The man won't be coming with Rick so he gives him a radio and tells him that he'll be alive every day at dawn so he can reach him. He tells Rick to be aware of groups of walkers. On his way, Rick stops where he saw the slice walker. Morgan looks at the pictures of his wife and then prepares to shoot. The man shoots. As he cries, he tells his son to remain downstairs. Rick finds the walker and is crawling. He pities it. He tells her that he's sorry for whatever happened to her and then shoots her in the head. This hurts him. The man sees his wife and decides to shoot, but he's unable to. As Rick broadcasts to someone, some people hear him but he can't hear them. We suddenly see Shane but they can't reach him any longer. Lori says that there are others out there and she can't put up signs to warn people away from the city. But Shane doesn't allow this. When Lori is frustrated, he tells that she can't do this as her son can't lose his mom. They then kiss and he leaves as he sees Carl. Rick looks at his family picture and goes out to find some gas. He calls out for some gas, but there's no one there who's alive any longer. He feels sick. He then sees a horse and leaves on it. He passes through an empty highway. The city is abandoned as well. He's hurt as he passes by the dead. He passes by a tank and suddenly hears a noise and a chopper flies by. When he chases it, there's a massive crowd of walkers around the corner. He flees and they follow him. He's met by more and soon overtaken and falls off his horse. They begin eating his horse and he loses his weapons. He hides under a tank and is followed and surrounded. He begins shooting them all. He then asks forgiveness to Laurie and Carl and as he's about to shoot himself, he sees an opening and enters the tank. As he takes off the gun of a dead guy, he's a walker Rick that shoots him in the head but the bolt ricochets and Rick gets out but he then soon closes the lid again. As he wonders what to do next, we hear a radio crackling. Someone calls him a dumbass. Rick's surprised. The walkers try to get inside the tank.